Hey, and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben, and this is my review for Yakima's S245. It's probably a title you haven't heard of unless you were massively into the series Into the Night. We've had two seasons there where the sun's radiation basically killed off most of the population, and it's our adventure of following those on a plane running away from the sun and then season two we basically had them in a bunker trying to survive and then we had culture clash clashes and then it was about the food trying to survive but at the end of season two we saw someone get shot and then we saw something about a submarine and if you heard a little bit by the grapevine that there was not a spin-off series just another series running in conjunction with the time and events that's happening around the world so there's a bit of a, a universe building here and so we get this series. Had you heard of this? Let me know. Are you excited about this? I know some people were less enthused by this season two of Into the Sun, but were kind of excited about this one. Non-spoiler review. Let's jump in. After disaster strikes Earth, a marine biologist and a submarine research mission must fight to survive with the crew as a conspiracy comes to light. Seven episodes, about 50 minutes apiece. First thing I'm going to say is it's definitely too long on the tooth. It feels like this series with the story that they have here could have been three episodes long. I know you're probably going to be sad to hear that, but that's just the truth. I've got to be truthful with my reviews. And the thing is, there's a lot of embellishment with things that go wrong on the sub as you'd expect them to. So when we get the culture clashes once again, and we get the, the, the worlds of people from different backgrounds. So we have a Navy and then we have these marine biologists who come from different work, work groups, ethic groups, and they bash heads because One's in charge, one's not in charge. They don't like, you know, there's a sort of dictatorship going on. And there's there's this push and pull. And when you take that and you put people in a sub, there's a bit of intensity. The thing is, there's not as much as intensity as you expect them to be because we know that they survive. Well, at least most of them survive because we've seen the sub and we've seen some of them. So even though we know that there's some tenseness and we're going to get that kind of origin story again of what's happened because we're starting again from afresh from this group of other people that don't know what's going on. But as the viewer, we know what's going on. Then it, it relies the story on these people. And the people, for the most part, are interesting. Not enough background is given to some of the characters for us to care about when they something bad happens to them. And unfortunately, the series spends a lot of time on characters that are important to the fake characters, the actors, the storyline. And so these actors spend a lot of time, or the story spends a lot of time with these characters when someone disappears or someone is killed off or something happens. There's a lot of grief moments. Sometimes 20 to 30 minutes of an episode is spent on something that they've just experienced. It just feels like they're wasting time. I guess if we like those characters as much it would mean more to us but because we don't know them that much we haven't spent that much time with them it just feels indulgent and a bit of a way so you kind of go oh please just get on with the story i'm not emotionally engaged as you think or that the so the, the series or the the tv show this the story is wanting us to be uh, which is a very, really a strange thing had this been the third or fourth season and then one of the main characters was knocked off I think I would be emotionally engaged then. But this is like, you know, two episodes in, three episodes in, four episodes in. I barely know these characters. And now you expect me to be emotionally engaged enough to care that you're spending half an hour on an, of an episode of about, you know, being reminiscent of this character that's now no longer around. And that was disappointing to me. So then we have the conspiracy that is along the right for us trying to figure out why somebody knows something do they know something like a, about the conspiracy of whether they knew about the sun, uh, what was happening with it and how they know that? So there's, that is fairly intriguing, but we had some of that in Into the Night as well. And that was always the kind of backburner. For me, it was like, how are you going to survive? And do you understand what the radiation actually does? Again, it doubles down on things we already know, like it's a new revelation about food. Um, about, you know, things have gone wrong, about what the earth is now actually like. And it kind of does like a surprise. Now, had you not watched Into the Night at all, then this would probably be more intense for you. But they also kind of nod to what else is going on with Into the Night. They kind of intersect in moments. Uh, 
And so it, it connects nicely, if you can remember, because it's been a couple of years, or at least a year, um, and you're going, okay, that's what the, that's how that connected with them, but does it actually matter in the long run? We know where they're going to end up. You know where the story ends. Therefore, you know kind of what happened. What you got left is the acting. And I think the acting is fairly good. We have a multiple languages. It is a Turkish uh, original, but we have multiple languages and cultures in here which is a nice touch. And that was what one of the, th the good things about Into the Night as well, multiple cultures. I like that, there's a reason for that. And so as we start getting our characters getting closer, I found myself being more interested in the story, more tenseness for real. So the last couple of episodes, I think were the best part of it, even though I think you could have shaved three episodes easily off this series. I think it was episode five that for me was the most interesting because it's a new location and there's something different that goes on and that was fairly tense. It was unique, but also felt like a waste of time as well. So every time I got to a high, there was a much negative zone to this. Loved Into the Night. I thought the acting of this series was good, but I just don't think the story is there. Not enough for me to care about the characters the way, the way they intended me to. I like the submarine and, and the closeness of the proximity of everything going wrong. And then you just add all that and it feels like it should have been better than it is. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this two and a half Nicolas Cage's out of five. It's kind of down the middle. I could give it a two, but there are moments I enjoyed it. There are moments I enjoyed those characters. And I think because it's a part of a whole, maybe the story will sit better when we get the third season or a difference a different series that kind of wraps up all of these characters together, if that makes sense. So at the moment, it's midway. Let me know your thoughts down below. What did you think of the first two seasons of Into the Night? Are you going to check this one out? Let me know your thoughts below. Thanks so much for watching, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long and choose well.